seen a special report on the crisis in Japan. First, the latest on the crippled nuclear power plant. Workers today began pumping fresh water into several of the reactor cores that should flush out seawater that was used in the immediate emergency after the tsunami. At least that's what they're hoping because yeah. two of the reactors, numbers five and six, are the least damaged and said to be safe. The other four are still in some stage of critical condition. All are believed to have damage to their reactor cores, but for now, they are not getting any worse, which gives plant officials the confidence to say reactors one, two, three, and four are stable right now. You know, the numbers alone offer a clear picture of the suffering in Japan. At, at the latest count, 27,478 people are dead or missing after the earthquake and tsunami, John. Yeah, but behind those numbers, there is this new reality which is emerging. Funerals are impromptu and cleanup crews are in tears as they work. CNN's Young La has the story. In the new normal of Japan's tsunami zone, there is no time to grieve. 16-year-old Hiroki Sugawara is underneath this blanket. His parents and two brothers drove his body to the emergency shelter for the best farewell they could offer in the wake of the tsunami. Don't give up hope, Hiroki's father tells his friends. Keep living for my son. This car side tribute to a life stolen young ends in minutes. His father covers his teenage son and says goodbye. The disaster's toll is measured not just in damage, but in human suffering. 93-year-old Matsuyo Iwahana barely escaped the tsunami, but is sick and getting worse by the day in the evacuation center. I don't know what to do, says her granddaughter Emiko Sato. I'm just trying to take this day by day. <laughs> That's all any victim can do, says Keiko Naganuma. <laughs> Seven or eight of my family is missing, she says, including her oldest son, eight-year-old Koto, presumed dead, his body washed away from his school by the tsunami. Of 108 students at Ishinomaki Okawa Elementary, 77 are dead or missing, the school gutted by the tsunami. Backpack after backpack sits for parents to retrieve, along with a picture of the school Little League, the bats they used, art bags filled with crayons. I'm not okay, she says. Of course I'm not, but I have another son. I can see he's pretending to be happy so we don't worry about him. So mother joins and pretends for her son and for herself. But pretending is not an option for city crews, victims themselves who cry as they work. I don't want to lose my hometown. I want it to come back. We won't give up, he says. A fighting spirit that keeps this region from crumbling. The son, who won't leave the wreckage of his home until he can find his parents' bodies. The hometown boy who pledges to rebuild despite that nearly every part of his town is leveled. And the newborn babies, Yuma and Yukia, just days old. Small signs, say their homeless mothers, that the next chapter in the rebirth of a region can be written. Kyung Law, CNN in Northern Japan, Tsunami Zone. Wow. And as we mentioned earlier, CNN has a new high-tech tool for smartphone users around the world who want to help the disaster victims in Japan. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Here's how it works. Uh, 